consultation this morning with Dr. Turan and uh, my um, translator for the day, Spartak, his name is. Lovely guy, lovely team. Um, first impressions, start off of the day. Driver was early to the hotel, perfect. Clinic, five minutes away, it was great. Spartak met me at the door, perfect. Walk in and this place is spotless. It looks exactly like a hospital at home, if not better. Um, wherever they brought me the day before to get the bloods, it was the same building, but it must have been just the out of our section. That just out of our section that's just not as good as the rest of the hospital because this place was spotless. So I was brought upstairs to the first floor, went into the room. Dr. Turan jo joined us, filled out some paperwork, paid for the pr uh, procedure there and then once the consultation was finished. Initially, they drew a hairline slightly lower than this. And I was like, like, oh my God, I can't believe that. I didn't expect just to get this lower. But I'm a very realistic person. And I know I need a lot more grafts at the back. So I was just a bit apprehensive that I want it all covered properly. So what they did was they had a line about, I'd say half a centimeter thick, and then they drew a permanent line on the inside of that, which sort of brought it up a little bit more. So who knows, I may live to regret that in the future, but we're talking minor details here. Um, I'm happy that my hairline is filled. That's the main thing for me. Um, they gave me one Xanax to kind of relax me throughout the procedure, which helped. I actually fell asleep twice, which was great. Um, I asked what I like, just in case anybody's thinking this, like it's a long procedure, you're lying down in an uncomfortable position. Can I have like earphones in and watch something on my phone or anything like that? And the way you lie and the way they move you around, you can't hold anything in your hands. And it's, I understand that it's not like hygienic. So I said, I have earpods and I just downloaded an audible book. And I said, could I listen to that? And they was like, as long as you can hear us after a certain stage, then you can turn it on. And I was like, perfect. I ended up doing that. And that's just and starting to leak. I don't even remember what the book was saying. And then I listened to a podcast for the second half and I don't remember anything in the podcast. Tomorrow, I think I'm just not going to bother bringing them because they were a bit of irritation, especially at one point when I had to lie on my side. Um, I'm just going to kind of chill and relax and try and sleep again tomorrow. Um, how the procedure started then? I was given an IV drip um, and I was given... Um, blood pressure was taken for sorry. Then it was an IV drip. Then it was um, onto the bed. Um, and it's the anesthetics. So from friends who've had it in the past and some friends who had it a few years back, the needles for the anesthetic were this thing to fear. They're really, really painful, this, that, and the other. But what was different about this thing, they had this like pressure punch and it was like an instant jab of anesthetic. And it felt like almost a ruler slap to the back of the head, quite a hard ruler slap to the back of the head, but it wasn't that bad. And I did like 15 or 20 of them and he said, this is just like an air pressure shot of anesthetic. And that numbs the head. And then they do the needles in the rest of the head for the local anesthetics. And it really helped these needles that I dreaded. I'm not afraid of needles, but no one likes needles. These needles that I dreaded, they weren't that bad. They were okay. Um, so that was one thing. Then I was, the IV drip was inserted. I, they said it was some sort of antibiotic. God, it could have been anything, but I mean, yeah fine some sort of antibiotic I'll take the word first and then the extraction part started so they extracted from the back obviously um, and they worked on the hairline first so they were looking for the single grass so they're a team of like three or four technicians one extracting the rest of them separating and then they um, Dr. Turan came in for the implantation part he doesn't do the whole procedure he does the implantation so I'm lying there and he did 900 implantations right at the front and then we broke for lunch. Uh, lunch was absolutely lovely. It was the nicest meal I had. It was nicer than the breakfast I had in the hotel. Um, it was like grilled chicken with rice and chips and even had red sauce and mayonnaise there and a bit of kind of veg as well. It was lovely. So I can't fault that whatsoever. I went back into the room that um, I had the consultation in so you're not kind of eating around your table and I cleaned up all the other stuff like so. That was quite good. Um, and then back in for the second part. And they got to around 2,000 grafts. And at 5 o'clock, that was it. Done. So I, start, I was there at about 
left here at quarter past ten, got there at um, latest half ten, bit of paperwork, started I'd say half eleven, broke for half an hour at lunch, finished at five. So yeah, I will show you what they did now. So they did 2000 at the front and I asked my um, translator um, kind of what was left to do. So you can see here, I'll show you now. So they did this side a bit more than they did this side. So they still have to finish this section here and then they're going to do the mid crown area and then the donut at the back. I never realized how bumpy my fucking head was until they shaved. As far as density goes, like I'm very, very thin at the front there and they have seemed to pack a rate load of graphs in there, which I'm very happy with. 20 to 10 local time here, which is 20 to eight at home, but I think I'm just gonna chill. Taking a few painkillers, but my head's still pounding a little bit. Um, they give you paracetamol, they say to take one every six hours and they're only 500 milligrams, so eh, I mean, I brought ibuprofen myself and I'm going to take them intermittently, so a bit of paracetamol, a bit of ibuprofen, just don't overdo it, you know yourself. I brought them from home, so they're not that crazy strength ones that you can get abroad. And I do have a couple of sleeping tablets that I'm going to take. Um, you're probably all aware of this, but the way I'm going to have to sleep tonight is with they said two pillows behind your back i have three just in case and they give you this sheet to cover the pillow like they said they expected a bit of bleeding and they give you this neck pillow so the neck pillow will go obviously around my neck but you have to sleep in this upright position that doesn't look very comfortable and that's for the next 10 days. It's not just for now during the procedure. So, like so, propped up almost at a 45 degree angle, I'd say, from the bed. I even sleep on my side usually, so this is going to be a nightmare. So, I do have sleeping tablets that I'm going to take and hopefully crash out, and tomorrow will be a new day. Okay, um, hi all. So, Day two is done. Um, got like an extra two thousand graphs in today. They told me it was a one thousand, four thousand one hundred and fifty-one graphs tall. Initially, I was told between two thousand and two thousand two hundred and fifty. So, yeah, it was about that. Um, today got picked up. Uh, driver was actually early. I was due to be ready at um ten fifteen both mornings. Both times driver was early, which was fine, no problem. First day I actually, I wasn't ready till 10.15, but this morning I was ready early enough, so I actually got to the clinic before 10.15. But that was no problem, I was up straight away, um, gowned up, connected to an IV drip, um, blood pressure taken, and then uh, the injections. The injections today were really, really sore. Um, I think that was because my head was sensitive from yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I've swelling on my forehead. Good chunk of that was from yesterday. It's worse today. Um, I'm lying on it for a couple of hours today made it worse. Um, oh yeah, I'm really sore to minute, to be honest. So today they finished up the hairline on this side, I think was shorter or one of the sides they didn't go back far enough yesterday which they told me and then they did the mid, mid scalp and then they did the crown so all done and um, and tomorrow i will be going back for a wash uh, and they will show me how to wash my head going forward for the next 10 days that's what it is they kind of they do the wash wash one for you then two to seven and then there's eight to 10. There's a slight difference between the two, but all will be explained to me tomorrow. I've been given an antibiotic to start tomorrow as well, and something for anti-inflammatory to start tomorrow too. So got a few tablets, but you get this booklet in a bag that kind of tells you every all the details. So it's pretty straightforward. It's easy to follow. And um, any questions I have, I can ask tomorrow. The usual team won't be there tomorrow. Um, it's a different consultant because it's a Sunday, the other guys are off. But Dr. Turan was there both days, 
he did the procedure so that's what was promised so that's fair and um, my translator is not going to be there but the guy who's the consultant has perfect english i was told so no issues there i'm happy with that no problem bit of a later start tomorrow as well it's quarter past 11 uh, instead of quarter past 10 um again no problem with me it's only going to take an hour and then i'll be dropped back here um so yeah that's kind of all today today was obviously no consultation in the morning so it was straight into step one uh stage one of extraction and implantation and then it was like an hour lunch break god i thought the lunch break today went on forever sitting there waiting for ages and then the second session was just mostly the crown and a tiny bit of adjusting the what's it called hairline god i'm blank there i'm very tired so i will show you what happened today so as you can see both sides of this are done now then you can see through the middle i got a bit done more more so on that side and then the crown so yeah quite a lot done this morning I woke up in a bit of a panic. I slept great last night. No, I did take a sleeping tablet, but I slept great last night. Um, but I woke up with like blood ran down my neck and all the way around to my, like, my belly button. It wasn't like thick blood, it was like a serum mixed with blood. So it was almost like a clear gel mixed with blood. So I knew, and I knew that's what they were talking about when it was leaking, uh, that they said could leak. And I expected like a bit of leakage, I just didn't expect that much. And then this morning my bandage was just covered in blood at the back. And I was thinking, oh no, oh no, oh no. And when I got there, nothing was said at all. So it must have been expected, it must have been the norm. So I will show you my bandage again is already starting to get a bit bloody at the back. Yeah, it's right in the middle. There you can see it. So yeah. And that's just starting to leak a bit. Be careful when you're bandaged up like this. Don't turn your head abruptly. Yesterday when I was walking to the shops, just to get a couple of bowls of water, I actually brought an umbrella so my head wasn't in the sun. I turned my neck instead of turning my whole body. And I think that's what caused this to leak excessively last night. I think that kick-started it off. And a couple of things I'd recommend here. Because you're sleeping up, for me, anything woke me. I woke twice in the night and I took a sleep and tablet. So I'd recommend earplugs. Um, this area is not even that noisy, but even the air conditioning, even when you don't turn it on, it makes this high-pitched noise every couple of minutes. Not every couple of minutes, every couple of hours in my room. Uh, just that woke me up one time. Um, something outside woke me up. Especially when you're sleeping in an awkward position. It's just something I didn't consider. Um, and I definitely bring sleep and tablets if you have any. Because sleep is key and you want to be out cold, not moving, not rolling around. I was terrified I'd roll over on my side or something because I do sleep on my side, but I was lucky that didn't happen. I woke up in the same position I fell asleep in. Um, something that I really do regret is when I was talking about my hairline is I actually encouraged them to move it slightly back, which I thought, I don't know why I fucking did that in the end. I was, I do know why. I was concerned that I wouldn't have enough grafts to cover, make it really dense here, the center and the crown. That's what I was concerned about. And I thought, if you bring that too far forward, we're gonna run out of grafts to thicken up the rest of my hair. Um, it looks worse now because my forehead's swollen, so I am banking on it dropping slightly, or not even dropping, but, and especially when hair grows too, it'll, come out a bit more or I'll be brushed over a bit more and it won't look as obvious. I've always had a big forehead anyway so I think bringing it down too much would have really changed my not, my appearance in a huge way. But um, yeah, a few things to consider if you're going for a hair transplant. Just make sure you know exactly what you want. When they drew that line for me I was shocked that they could actually thought they'd have enough grafts to do that because I was pretty bald at the back as well. So yeah. They're kind of all the tips I have, really. Uh, yeah, best of luck to anyone who's willing to do this as well.